Alright guys, welcome back to Zen of Years. We are now on part 79, and we are beginning the last bit of the final side quests for the game before we go and tackle the final dungeon. So the first thing we're going to do, actually I said in the last video we were going to go, we were going to head over to the lighthouse, but I lied. We're not actually going to go there just yet. First things first, uh, we're going to head back to Nortune, because there is something there to check out. Now, the world map has drastically, drastically changed. Um, most of the places on the world map that you used to be able to go to no longer exist. So, for example, um, you can't go back to Ava or Nissan, you can't go back to Ignis, though you couldn't go to Ignis since the first 20 minutes of the game. Um, but essentially, uh, pretty much the only towns still remaining are the... There's the hideout in uh, of the snowfield hideout, and then over here at Nortune. And in Nortune, there are only two places to go. We can go here to the Imperial Info Center, where we can sell all of our old stuff. basically all of our monster parts that we've collected. And um, the Anima Relic Dungeons uh, from earlier in the disc are now open and available to uh, to down or to fight in. So if you want to pick up more monster parts to sell to the info center and get more money, you are more than welcome to. It's a good place to uh, collect money, or at least one of a, a decent place, I guess. That was a lot. I think I still have more than the max, so let's go ahead and sell those off too. Because it only lets, for some reason, it only lets you sell 30 at a time. I'm not sure why. But it is the best uh, money for the monster parts in the game. Okay, there we go. Now that we're done with that, there is one other place to explore here, and that is the Battling Arena. So, as you can see, they're still doing the battles. And of course, there's Big Joe, because sure, why not? Of course, he couldn't be the one killed during it. So we can basically do a whole bunch. This now has every single song in the game. I think with the exception of maybe 10 or so. And we can set the track. Uh, let's go here. No, not that one. No, 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 absolutely not. Uh, maybe this one? No, 
No, that's not it. Uh, there's one that I'm looking for. Nope, that ain't it. No, absolutely not. We're done with him. He's gone. He's dead. Nope. This one? No. The thing that is, they're not labeled. Nope. We don't need to hear Bart being stupid music. No, that's not it. Where is it? This one? Nope, that's just the jump scare song. That's the really annoying holy music song. That's the game over music. That's the winning at speed music. Nope, maybe it's under the world. It's this one that I want. No, that definitely isn't it. I'm going to go through all of these if I have to to find the song that I'm looking for. Nope. Oh god, absolutely not. No, no, no. That's the Shabbat music. Alright, I think I'm getting close to the song that I'm looking for. And that's the Thames music. Just the old battle music. It's really weird. I can't I'm not sure why I can't find it. All right, I'll give it a few more tries and if I can't find the song that I'm looking for, then we'll just say forget it. I think maybe it was one of the track 5s. That's not it.
Try one more. Nope, that's not it. Oh, whatever. Um, now, for what it's worth, if you decide to participate in the battling arena, they have a couple new versions. Uh, they have... Well, first, the thing is the battle points. And there's also the actual main battling arena. Now nah, we don't want—we don't actually want to enter. Uh, but basically, there are now two versions of the battling arena. There's one where you can play as just Fey uh, using either Weltal, Weltal Two, or Zeno Gears to fight in the arena, and that's where you mainly earn the BP from. Or you um, there's the versus mode. Uh, it's more like a practice mode where you can, and that's an actual two-player mode of the game where you can play as any single gear that you have encountered, with a few exceptions. Um, the only Blade Gash of the Elements gear shows up. None of the other, uh, the, the main combined form and the other characters do not show up. Um, also, the... What is it? Um, there is, uh, Elvergers does not show up until you reach the second to last chamber in the final dungeon and then leave the final dungeon. And then there's one bonus enemy that is essentially all of the, um, or that can only be obtained when you fight every single other gear in the game, or in the battling arena as Zenogears, and then go through and, uh, and then go through the actual battling arena. So that actually does mean that you have to go all the way to the final area, the final dungeon, leave, fight Elvergers and Xenogears, beat it, and then you get to go and... yeah, it's a pain in the ass. Thank you, Bart, for liking the game. maxed out his death blows, finally. Um, so he'll be learning his next death blow, next level, actually. Excellent. Alright, so time to actually do the side quest I promised we were going to do. So, there was a lighthouse back in the Akubi area that we need to go to. Oh, and over here is the Doomman's Isle. Uh, be very careful about where you land on this island because it is possible to accidentally get stuck. Uh, if you park, uh, basically, because you can actually land over here and then enter the Doomman's Isle and then get blocked from being able to go back to the Grassel. Because reasons. In case you're wondering, the lighthouse is not actually marked on the map. It's just something you would have seen while flying around. Here is the Akubi lighthouse that I was talking about. 
Before we do anything, however, we need to change up our party a bit. First things first. What do you have, Bart? Uh, you do not need any of this stuff because you will not be joining us on this mission. Actually, let me also strip your gear. Though I will give you. Oh, I guess I never gave him that new uh, whip. Okay, whatever. Anyway, um. So for this mission, we actually need Emerelda, and the reason why will become very apparent as soon as we go into the lighthouse. But before we can actually go into the lighthouse, we gotta go talk to uh, Marguerite, so that we can get Emerelda in the party. Actually, Choo Choo is temporarily not in the party because Choo Choo's having a crisis of faith, so we need to go and have a chat with her. You know, because Ellie is you know, no longer in the party. Thank you, Primera. You are useful as always. Okay, so Choo Choo, like I said, is hiding in the gear hangar. More specifically, she is in Ellie's spot, as you can see. But if you ever wanted to see the Omnigear sprites, um, well, here's your chance, basically. Oops. We do not need to go visit Elstir. It's not like he's ever going to be in the party. Well, actually, he'll probably show up during the final boss battle, because the final boss battle is a gigantic endurance run of uh, bosses, where you can freely swap between characters. And so we're basically going to use him early on to tank some damage, and then once he's been used up, and we can discard him, and yeah. And now Ellie's slot in the gear dock is permanently empty uh, for the remainder of the game. Zeepzine is supposed to, I believe Zeepzine is still supposed to be at the gear dock in Solarit or in Shabbat, but I don't have any idea on how to access it to actually view it anymore. Um, actually, let's get Emeralda equipped. Um, Emeralda does not use weapons, so. Similar to Ellie, Emeralda is a mage type, so we are going to give her some power magics because um, ether amplification. What it does is it multiplies the character's ether stats by uh, the ether amp amount and then divides it by a certain amount. I don't remember exactly what. 
but basically it ends up making it big explosions and boom, yeah. Alright, so we want her to have an Ether Doubler, and actually I'm going to give her a uh, Wizardry Ring because we will be doing some on-foot fighting, and Emeralda only has her first six death blows. Which I'll show you in a moment. See, though she has a... well, okay, she has her first seven death blows. Though she has a, a significant chunk of experience towards learning her last couple. Um... Alright, and also Emeralda is basically an upgraded, uh, basically an upgraded Ellie. She has single target attacks, all target attacks, she does not have the area attacks that Ellie had, but all of her spells are significantly cheaper than Ellie's were. Um, Ellie's cost 4 mana per shot, or 8 mana with the doubler, uh, Emeralda's cost 3 mana or 6 with the doubler, and then 6 and 12. Um, she also does not have the percentage chance to fail that Ellie had. The only disadvantage Emerilda has over Ellie is no air runs. So, Emerilda does have the ability to clear out enemies very quickly, provided they are weak to ethers, or to elemental ethers. If they are not weak to elemental ethers, you're gonna have a bad time. Alright, so now that we've got everything set up and ready to go, let's head to the lighthouse. Now, as I've mentioned before, during Anima Relic Hunt, originally there were uh, they were intending to have all of the playable characters obtain Omni Gears, uh, with the exception of Choo Choo. So Emeralda and uh, and Maria were originally going to get upgraded versions of Crescens and Zeepsin, uh, respectively. Um, Crescens upgraded form was basically going to have more elaborate wings, and I think a couple other minor changes, but more or less looked the same. Zebzine, on the other hand, was going to go from big hulking tank to big hulking angel-like tank. With wings and everything. Alright, yeah, yeah, yeah. Alright, so now that we've gotten that nice little pep talk out of the way, let's launch the Yggdrasil. And go in and immediately land so that we can go into the lighthouse. Now, the lighthouse is mostly a gear area, it, um, but there are some area, there are some places where you have to go, or where you have to leave your gears in order to get certain items. And of course, that is an elevator that goes down deep into the crust of the Earth, of the planets. Welcome to the ruins of the Zebulun civilization. This is the ruins that we saw from the Zebulun or from the dig site uh, of the Ethos. Now there are random encounters in here, and there are some items to pick up. For example, that death blower three. Uh, the enemies here are all gear sized. Uh, I think, actually, I believe there might be a couple of character-sized enemies, but they're mostly gear-sized. 
uh, griffins and dragons. Oh, and protein tribe, apparently. And time to show off Emerelda. Now, you actually don't want Emerelda to earn that much experience here. Um, there's a reason why, and I'll show it to you in just a little bit. Or, you'll see why in just a little bit. The encounter rate here is fairly high. Uh, it's not frustratingly high like some areas can be. going to burn them all. Emerald's ethers are also much more impressive than Elves, I think. the two, or two of the items, and then actually, so here's one of the character areas, let's go ahead and save here. So there's a couple things to look at in here, for example, um, through this back room, or it should be, or maybe not, okay. Up the stairs. So now we're going to get some glimpses of what episode four, or episode two would have been, uh, which was, or actually sorry, episode three, which would have been the Zebulun Civilization episode. Um, once I actually get to a place that will show anything. Here we go. something interesting. Yep, that was Miang. Uh, during the Zebulun era, she was actually, uh, she actually inhabited a pair of twins. Uh, the That was the 666th and 667th incarnations of Miang, uh, who were simultaneously active during the Zebulon era.
Oh, come on, don't lock up on me. I know you're still working, I can hear you screeching. Unfortunately, Emeralda doesn't actually say anything, even if you bring her here, which I think was kind of a, a lost opportunity. But that's it for this particular area. Be careful, though. Um, even though it is rare, you can still get into random encounters in these rooms. Oh, and here is our first encounter with the dragon. Now, these dragons are actually rather tame. The dragons on Goodman's Isle, however, are not, because those dragons you can only fight on foot. See, when you fight the dragons on foot, they deal a significantly larger amount of damage. But they also do have a large amount of health as well. So it takes a little bit to kill to actually kill one. But they give you a decent chunk of uh, experience. Well, at least the Doomman's Isle ones do. That is Billy's ultimate gear weapon. Yes. Wait, what? Of course Joe shows up. Why wouldn't he show up? And you will uh, these four chests in the in Joe's shop here respawn, so you can constantly. I mean, if you're really desperate, you can keep farming them. I, uh, I don't know why you would spend the time doing that because there are much easier ways to farm. But he sells items. More specifically, he sells dry. So if you really want to spend the time upgrading Choo Choo, you'll be spending quite a bit of time and money here in Joe's shop, uh, buying up all his drive and using it to pump the crap out of Choo Choo so that when she goes gear size, she's basically as strong or stronger than Xenogears. But the real reason we're here actually is for Joe's gear shop.
more specifically. Well, there's the Godson ammo for uh, the new weapon we just got for Billy, so we'll go ahead and buy a couple of those. Uh, parts, on the other hand, we have GNSR 50 and the GSNR 20. These things, as you can see, significantly boost the attack power of whatever they're attached to. And then also we've got the chargers. Um, all, he sells all four of the chargers. Uh, though we'll be getting a Z charger in a little bit, so we're not actually going to buy one here. And the GNSR 50s stack. And basically, if you put two GNSR 50s on a gear, that gear will pretty much one-shot most enemies. Uh, I mean, it will be almost guaranteed to deal straight nines at every time it attacks. Just using a level 1 death blow. The other reason is, the, uh, the engines that Josh sells are the best engines for the attack monkeys, like Xeno Gears. The Omega 100, uh, Omega 100, 100 outputs, but only 1,000 fuel. Really good for Xeno Gears, because Xeno Gears doesn't use fuel that much. It uses fuel for attacking. It punches things. That's it. So, with a massive... And also remember, booster activation is based on the total fuel capacity, not on the attack power of the gear. So... Yeah, we just broke Xeno Gears. Um, it also has upgraded frames for Steer and, uh, and Zeep Zeep, so you may want to pick those up as well, and also the best armors in the game for each of the, uh, for each of the gears. Uh, Z Gold is the best physical armor, then the Z Alloy is the best uh, physical ether armor. Basically, this is what breaks the game. We're just going to sell off some of our old stuff that we no longer need so that we have the money to buy the new broken stuff. Let's see here. Don't need that anymore. And basically they're just playing flight saying, Hey, welcome to the secret shop. Buy all you want. Congratulations. definitely buying some GNSRs to put on Xeno Gears and make it even more ridiculously broken than it already is. We have enough for one GNSR. That's really, I mean, two is ideal, but one's good enough. We'll have to come, uh, we will be coming back here when we get some more money to get the rest of his upgrades. So let's go ahead and break Xeno Gears. Uh, there we go. Yes, 1,700 attack power. Faye is finally going to be able to out-damage Satan. Alright, so let me see here. There's also more Zebulon storyline over here. there is. Maybe not.
Oh, here we go. Take this in for a moment. In case you're wondering, yes, that is the same Big Joe. How? I... That's a good question. From what I understand, I believe he somehow put himself in suspended animation for the 4,000 years between the Zebulum era and present day. Uh, not 100% sure on that. He may just be immortal because he certainly shows up everywhere. But, yeah. And, of course, with a uh, real-world reference like Elvis, yes. the Essentially, this the Zebulum era is supposed to be analogous to modern-day Earth. Okay, and in case you're wondering, there are no bosses or anything like that in this area. Um, what we're looking for is actually right around here in this parking lot type area. Uh, there should be a... Oh, there we go. Through that gate. kill one. Oh, that's awkward. should be a manhole of some kind that we can go into. Uh, no, maybe not. Hold on. Let's see. Where is it? Oh, 
there it is. Okay. So right over here. Gotta get the angle just right. Oh, there it is. Okay, over here. So now we go down here into this. This is not a real dungeon, it's just a short little romp. Basically, we are in the subway now. And this is why we brought Emeralda. So here is our Z Charger. You get one freight. Alright, let me see here. And then you go this way. I don't believe there are any random encounters in this area, but I'm not 100% sure. And this is why we bring Emeralda. And the truth comes out. It also appears that in every life, Faye was an artist.
Well, it was about time for Emeralda to have a tragic backstory. Emeralda is all grown up. Now this is the reason why we did not want Emeralda to get any experience or gain too many levels before this scene. Uh, the reason why is because Emeralda's adult body is actually considered a different character and has a different set of stat growths than regular Emeralda does. <clears throat> Adult Emeralda is almost guaranteed to plus one almost every single one of her stats every time she levels up. So she's... and she's almost as fast as Satan is, so she's essentially the second most powerful attacker in the game. At least if you take the time to uh, train her up on her death blows and whatnot. Not to mention, her ether stat also goes through the roof thanks to the guaranteed stat up every level up. Her sentence unfortunately still stays the same. Now, presumably, um, if, El or if uh, Amaralda's Omni Gear was still going to be in the game, the basically the parking lot over here, the um, that little facility, was probably end up being where her Omni Gear is stored, or where her uh, Anima Relic would be stored so that she can get the El Crescent's Omni Gear. No idea where the Anima Relic for Maria would be if Maria ever got her Omni Gear. Oh, that's a lot of damage. This is bad. I probably should have spent some money on upgrading Emerald's gear. does some damage. And remember, that's just with one GNSR-50 attack. Imagine what's going to happen when I give him the second one. Hell, imagine what happens when I give one to Satan.
Yeah, damage. Lag and damage. Oh, and Faye just learned his or his fifth 7 AP death blow, the light elemental. His final 7 AP death blow will not be learned until he reaches level 80, so 10 levels from now. Uh, let's see here. Actually, I want him to have a death blow over because... Alright, so let's head back to Joe's shop so that we can fix up our cures before we get out of here. And if we have enough money, we'll pick up a GNSR-50 for Satan. Now remember, that was a triangle attack. It's a real shame that the Power Crisis effect doesn't carry over to Gears mode. Because then Faye would be doing even more damage. Alright, so let's go into Big Joe's shop. And like I said, the chest refill. Um, the chests have random contents. They have like one of four different possible contents, each one, and each chest has its own set. Uh, let's go ahead and sell off some unnecessary items. Let's see, those can go away. That can go away. That can go away. Well, we can sell that because Ellie's no longer in the party. side of the shop and see if there's anything else I can sell. Oh wait, actually, I have a whole bunch of gold bullion and gold nuggets that I no longer need that I can sell. Because the, the only purpose of the gold bullion and gold nuggets is for, or the only in-game purpose for those, besides selling them for money, is to give them to the digger guy at the, uh, in the remains of Shabbat. I don't need these anymore. That we can sell, that we can sell. Um, those are better being sold at the... The info center. Uh, it's all those. We don't need those. And 
the drives are all going to get fed to Choo Choo once I ever get around to getting her back in the party. Okay. Alright, so let's go ahead and buy a GNSR 50 for Satan. As well as restore all our fuel that we just lost. Actually, I think we're better off putting him on an Omega 100 before we give him the DNSR 50. So, let's see. I don't have anything that I can sell. Um, that I can sell. That can be sold. And that's still not enough. Yeah, we're not selling the Z charge that we just got. Uh, the A charger can go, however. Go, that can go. Those can definitely go. Keep those. Sell the 60s. We can sell all of his old gear swords because we have the Kishin or the Kijin sword. So we do not sell the Godfather. Because we, there's no way of getting that back if you sell it. There we go. Okay. Yeah. And of course, I just left the shop instead of going into the buy menu. GNSR 50 for Satan coming right up. Okay, now we can leave the Joe shop. There we go. Alright, everything is good. So now we have a completely broken Fenrir and a completely broken Xenogears. Well, not completely broken. They'll be completely broken when I give them two GNSR 50s. But we can go ahead and leave Zebulon for now. There are still other locations to check out for additional side quests and items. So, But that will have to wait for the next video because once we leave here, I'm going to go ahead and save and uh, take a quick break as I split off the video. Alright guys, see you in a little bit.